Did you move to Los Angeles or did you grow up here, Andrew? No, I grew up in Illinois and uh, I moved in 2005. Did you grow up in like a rural part of Illinois or uh, Northern city? suburbs of Chicago. You Willamette know, uh, or? Uh, uh, Glenview, Northbrook. Oh, okay. You know, where Ferris Bueller's from. Oh, yeah, nice. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay. And uh, yeah, I moved in 2005 to uh, pursue uh, my career in filmmaking. Did you go to school for filmmaking or writing? No, I uh, went to, I wanted to go to USC or UCLA, but uh, I was out of state, it was really expensive. So also parents didn't really approve, you know, wanted uh, their son to get a real job. <laughs> so I, um, I went to the University of Illinois and I, I made films, short films over there. And I entered film festivals there too. So you had another major, you were? Yeah, I majored in psychology and yeah, I was, you know, I'm still very interested in psychology and I, I like to put that in some of my, my writing. So with these short films, would you enter them in contest or you were just right now doing, or at that time, just doing it for yourself? I was doing it for myself, but the festival was a good like deadline so that I could, you know, complete it by a certain time, usually at the end of the semester. And yeah, I would, I would just do it to learn. And, but the, you know, getting an audience at the end was, was always great, so. So you came out here in 2005, so the economy was doing well. Social media was just sort of like, well, I think what MySpace was going and. Right, well I think Facebook was still there, but. Facebook, okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Facebook too. Just started. Just started, okay. So things are, are looking good. You're coming out here. What was your plan? Were you hoping to make films? Were you hoping to get a job in television? Well, you know, I, um, I wanted to get a job um, in TV, but, you know, kind of have it be a temporary thing and I wanted to make some money and save up and have enough money to fundraise, you know, to, to fund my own short films and I was gonna make, you know, uh, feature films, you know, independent feature films and, um, you know, just have enough money saved up and I was, the original plan was to save enough money to, to do that. So were you, um, at what point did you decide you wanted to be in the film industry? Was back in, back home in Illinois? Actually, I was, a, I was a, at a young age. Um, I was nine years old. I, my family had just gotten a camcorder for my older brother's graduation. And just naturally, we all started to make, uh, make videos, my brothers and I. And I, you know, they didn't get hooked, I, I got hooked. And uh, I just started making um, short films by myself with the camcorder um, for a couple years. And then eventually I made my, uh, my first uh, longer short film in, uh, in uh, senior year of college, or senior year of high school, I should say. So then when you came to LA, did you apply for temporary jobs or did you look for a job in film and television as crew or whatever? Mm -hmm. Well, in college I actually interned at, I got a job at, um, or actually I got an internship at Malcolm in the Middle it was through my, you know, one of my brothers had a hookup and there was a, um, a good like entry to get in, it was the writer's office. And while I was there, I also applied for other internships and one actually became a job and it was working on an independent feature. And yeah, so that was kind of my first gig was already in college. And then after college, I actually moved out here and started looking for work and I ended up uh, getting onto uh, Prison Break, season, season one, and the post-production department. And that was also through my other brother, you know, he had a hookup with, uh, with a pr producer on a different show. And I totally messed up that interview. Oh, why? Sorry to interrupt, but what was the... Well, the, um, I think I just hadn't come out of my shell. I was really sh kind of shy during the interview, and I didn't really know anything about what I was applying for. So. I went in there and I remember they were asking, I asked them like, how, how long are the days? And they were like 12 hours. And I was like, whoa, uh, <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. So what my producer, my, what my friend, uh, my brother's friend said was, you know, he can't, if there's a few applicants and I'm like, you know, you know number two, I'm not the, like the, the top pick, he could argue for me and kind of push me in, but I was like at the bottom of all the applicants that they interviewed, so he couldn't really do much for me, you know, even though I had that connection. 
I always have this theory and I've read about it that sometimes the people that seem super confident and amazing in interviews are actually the worst person for the job. <laughs> and it's the one that's yeah. the quieter one. But anyway, that's that's a whole that's a whole psychological debate <laughs> on who would Maybe. be a better worker. But um, so you decided to finally get a job though doing uh, obviously something you have several credits i mean you have an impressive list of credits of working on different shows as accounting and mm -hmm. different crew like yeah i worked on uh prison break season one uh house sarah Connor chronicles what else uh curb your enthusiasm eastbound and down so these are some really like big name shows yeah. and i was working on all these different departments you know writer's office accounting production, post-production, and I really got to see like how the different departments were, you know, functioned and how they were different from each other. Well, you know, you talked about something, and I hope you're okay if we touch on that, and that is compromises one makes about selling out. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Are you okay with that? Yeah, sure. Um, I think a lot of people in my position, a lot of people who want to make it in, in film or TV, entertainment industry, they don't really think about, or they think about the money aspect, but not in terms of making it. So, you know, they're like, they're, they have a plan of, I'm going to work three jobs, or I'm going to become a waiter or waitress and do auditions on the side until I make it, or I'm going to take a bunch of uh, screenwriting classes and do a little side hustle here until I make it. But often they don't actually consider what that means. Like, what does making it mean? Would they be okay with, you know, becoming a staff writer on a TV show, or doing rewrites for some production company on a script that they didn't start writing? I think um, a lot of people don't actually think about that, and so I know a lot of people who, unfortunately, are staff writers or they're doing a bunch of rewrites. They're making the money, but they're also really unsatisfied because it's not really what they intended to do. And I think it's something that really should be given a lot of thought um, because unfortunately some people want to be fulfilled artistically and it's, I think you really need to ask yourself, well, how much am I willing to throw that away? You know, or am I, am I not really willing to throw that away at all? Um, some people want to get paid by the industry, but there's a cost to that too sometimes. So that's why I, I always, encourage people to, you know, if there's, a, if there's another way to make money that's really easy, to try to like pursue that and try to be as independent as they can from the industry, if you're someone who wants to be independent. Now, I know some people who are staff writers or, you know, they get hired to do rewrites who are completely happy and satisfied. But you have to ask yourself, which one am I? Am I someone who's gonna be happy getting hired by Hollywood? Or am I gonna be someone who is just gonna take the money but I'm gonna kind of grit my teeth doing all these rewrites or, or things that I don't want to do. Yeah, sometimes I think too, the only way you'll know is if you're lucky enough to take a job that pays you well, but you're working like 15, 20 hours, or you're always on call, or mm -hmm. you never get a weekend. And then you finally realize, yeah, you know what? This, this isn't for me. Sometimes I yeah, think you need people, that. Yeah, some people, you know, you have to kind of try it out first. I mean, it happened to me. Did I, it? Um, you know, I worked in TV, and I really wasn't sure. At first, I thought maybe I could get a job in TV because there's more money to be made in TV. Um, maybe I could do that on the side, and then like I could, you know, get promoted and, and become a staff writer and branch out and do do movies. But TV is tough. I mean, TV's, you know, there's a lot um, that you don't get to decide on. I mean, I just remember being, you know, on some shows, even where to go for lunch. I couldn't even, you know, it was a compromised decision. You know, I couldn't even choose what, where I wanted to eat for lunch, you know? So I was doing all these things over and over again that I, you know, I didn't really sign off on. And by the end, I said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta take a shot. I gotta leave the steady, steady paycheck and pursue my own thing. And, you know, if I come up with anything else on the side that's easy, you know, let's try to do that too. I think some people, yeah, they thrive in those corporate group setting. Sometimes I'll see people mm -hmm. at lunchtime, like a big group of, of people, then I'm like, yeah, they look like they're coming from 
some studio job or something within right. the industry, advertising, whatever. And they look perfectly happy and, and maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But I think for some people, they can do that. And I think, again, some people can't. And that's not a bad thing if you're more, you want to do something independent. It's just harder, I think, to get that, that right. paycheck. It is harder to get that paycheck, but keep in mind that you know, the, the downside is that someone who's getting that paycheck, you know, they might not be as fulfilled artistically as, you know, someone who is, uh, or someone who is doing it the independent route, making what they want to make. So I think you got to ask yourself, which one am I, you know? And if it takes, you know, some time, you know, you have to try it out to see, you know, uh, just try it out and see, but don't, you know, don't take too long, you know, don't get stuck is what I'm, you know, suggest, what I suggest to all my friends in the industry who are, are about to pursue what they want to do. Are your parents okay with you now that you moved to LA or? Well, they just moved to LA too. Oh, they did. So, oh, great. Yeah, okay. but they were, you know, we had, um, they were in Illinois for a while. So, you know, I had to call them and everything every week, you know. But um, yeah, I helped them move to, to LA. And um, yeah, I think now that they, you know, now that they found out that I'm doing something that's actually making money, renting out the DeLorean. Um, yeah, now that they're, they're um, you know less worried. I think I think a parent's gonna be worried if um, their kid is going you know is doing some sort of artistic venture that's not traditional because there's you know there are a lot of question marks and nothing is guaranteed as as much as you know a steady paycheck. But even that's not really guaranteed either. So I um I remember a story about um, well one of the stories that I tell is I actually met a famous actor's father on an airplane in the 90s. And it was the first time I'd been on an airplane by myself. And I just I was flying from LA to Chicago. This guy started talking to me. And we started talking, he was this older gentleman. And he was starting to say, you know, he was talking about his son a lot. And I, you know, I started to listen, you know, I, I didn't mind, it was my first time, so I was just listening to him. And I thought he was really cool because he uh, really supported his son emotionally um, even though his son was kind of struggling at the time as a struggling actor. And I made sure I, you know, remembered the name and I checked out his, his, uh, his name on IMDb over the course of the years. And his son is now one of the biggest uh, names in comedy. So, wow. right. So, and cool. I remember specifically asking him, you know, what do you, do you think your son's ever going to make it? And he kind of like shook his head and said, nah, you know, more because, not because he didn't believe in his son, but more because he thought Hollywood was this, you know, giant sinkhole where everybody went to die, you know. And no, his son, you know, he said no, but he said he, um, he really supported him emotionally because, you know, his son had the courage to do, you know, what he wanted to do and he respected him for that. So, I mean, that's, that's support from a parent that, that um, you know, is, is really great that I wish all parents had. That's a cool story. Yeah, yeah. I almost don't want to say his name. Cause yeah, no, no, we won't. We won't. We won't. We won't say his name just to keep his anonymity. But um, I think that's a really He's cool very story. Very famous. Hmm. And it's interesting that you got to sort of see. I don't know at what level he was at then on IMDb in terms had, of how many credits. He had. Uh, <laughs> he had one part on a TV show, uh, that was like a guest spot, <laughs> and he had one line in a movie. And that was it. Wow. And now, and then, then, now he's one of the bigger names. He had, he was the star of his own TV show. Wow, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I always find it interesting to see someone's transgression of, you know, how they were in the beginning, and then mm -hmm. sometimes it's more exciting than to actually think what their lives might be like now. Right. Because um, sometimes I know people talk about they wish they could go back to those. Those times I was watching something on the two Steves, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and mm -hmm. Steve Wozniak just talked about you can't really get those times back when they were building a computer in the garage. You can't get right. those times when it just seems like it's nothing, but it really right. was part of the journey. But you, you know, so maybe some of these actors feel the same or filmmakers. Yeah, sometimes the struggle and the pain is actually what makes you into a, you know, a better person, or you learn from it, or you put it into your artwork. And you know sometimes you can use that and 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 uh, really make something great, you know, like like Apple, like what, what yeah. two Steves did. And then you know once you've made it, it's like then there's a different problem where you can't you can't really fail as 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 much as you you did before in the past, you know. 
Right, a lot of eyeballs, a lot of scrutiny. Right, right. right. 